Praise God. <laughs> Be instant in season, out of season. Whether we're ready or not, we're going. Praise the Lord, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord tonight for Bible study. We're in the book of Hebrews chapter 7. And uh, thank you all for joining us online. If you have your Bible, you can follow along with us. Hebrews chapter 7, we're going to finish it off tonight. So first let's look to God in prayer. Father, thank you tonight for this Bible study. Thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house, to come and to study your word together. We just want to give thanks and praise to you. And lift up all glory and honor and praise to the wonderful name of Jesus. Bless this Bible study. Accomplish your will. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we're talking about Hebrews chapter 7. We've been in this chapter for about two weeks now. And I'm hoping to finish it off tonight. So we'll do it a little bit different. I'm just going to do a lot of reading. And then we'll go back and talk about it. But we, in the beginning when we start this chapter, I said I didn't want to go too fast fast through it because uh, it deals with the priesthood of Melchizedek and the importance of it and there's so much really the more you begin to study the more there's more so much more involved in it but um, we won't stay too long in it but we talked about who Melchizedek was king of Salem which is king of peace which we know is Christ and we talked about last week we talked about tithing under the Melchizedek priesthood that's where it started and so now we're living under that priesthood, it continues. And so tonight, what we want to focus on the remainder of the chapter, we want to focus on the title we, for this one is The Superiority of the Melchizedek Priesthood, showing how great or how better this priesthood is cons when, co when in comparison to that of the Levitical priesthood. And once again, as a reminder, we are in the book of Hebrews, so Paul, as we you know, agreed, or as I agree, <laughs> is the author of, the, of this book. He's letting these Jewish disciples know that everything they have in Christ is better. And so that really is the theme, that everything that we have in Jesus Christ is better. And so, like I shared, the priesthood was a major, major thing to them because that's what their whole lifestyle was built upon, was the laws, the Levitical priesthood, their high priest, their temple, everything. And so here he's trying to show them that in Jesus Christ, they have something way better than they ever had under the Levitical priesthood. Under the Levitical, priest, Levitical priesthood, they had a man as their high priest. Under this priesthood, they have Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Under the, Levit the Levitical priesthood, they had to offer animal sacrifice that couldn't wash away their sins. Under this priesthood, no sacrifice is needed. God already gave the sacrifice, Jesus Christ. Under the Levitical priesthood, they had an earthly temple, which they will never able, none of them would ever been able to enter into the Holy of Holies. Under the new, this new priesthood, every one of us have access to the holiest of God. Amen? Amen? We can all come boldly to the throne. So he's showing them continuously that what they have in Christ is better. So tonight, as we finish this off... We will talk about his superiority or how much better is the Melchizedek priesthood. And thank God that's what we're living under. I do not want to live under the Levitical priesthood. I mean, I, yeah, that, that, that would have been a mess. And that would have been a mess. It's very hard, very difficult. First of all, they couldn't do it. And that's what we're going to focus on tonight, why they couldn't do it. But let's read some of the, the verses. Um, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11 through 28. He said, If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest, priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he whom these things are spoken pertained to another tribe, of which no man give attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there ariseth another priest, 
who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by which we draw nigh unto God. And inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest, for those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath, by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered or allowed to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests, to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priest which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the Son who is consecrated forevermore. And there we go. Chapter 7 is finished. Good Bible study, right? <laughs> well, I just want to read that because, like I said, I don't want to really stretch it too long with these things, especially in the book of Hebrews. You can take a verse and you can really stay there forever. And I don't want to do that. I want to stay within the context of the Bible study and, you know, don't, you know, take too much time on one chapter. And so we broke it down into three sections in chapter 7, who Melchizedek is, tithing under the Melchizedek priesthood, and now he's showing us how much better the Melchizedek priesthood is can compare to that of the Levitical priesthood. And we know that the Old Testament, from all of us studying the Bible, the Old Testament is made up or consists of many different things. We know the Bible in the Old Testament gave us, I'm sharing this for a reason, because a lot of people are saying, okay, because we're not living under the Levitical priesthood, then, or, or a lot of people like to phrase it, we don't live under the Old Testament. Right? We don't, we don't live, so we don't have to do all those things. Well, the Old, the Old Testament, as we know, it's made up of many different books, many different uh, uh, things. It's considered many different things, and we got the history of the creation, the book of Genesis, the call of Abraham, the first family that God called to be the one that will follow him by faith. We can't just get rid of all those things, right? They're history. We have the book of uh, Exodus, which is the history part of what is part of it is historical of Israel being in bondage and then God delivering them and then from that point on he gave them the Levitical priesthood later on in there he began to institute laws and stuff for them and we can't destroy all those things because they make up the Old Testament there are moral laws given by God in the Old Testament such as the Ten Commandments we can't do away with that that's not been done away with right it's still active right. we have principles or fundamental truths that, that God gave us and that God will honor, such as the book of Proverbs. There are a lot of things in there that God deemed important. There are poetical things, such as the Psalms and, and um, the book of Job and different things, and, and prophecies, some of them fulfilled, and some of them that is being fulfilled today, and some that will be fulfilled in the future. And so we have all these things in the Old Testament, we have moral laws, and then we have ceremonial laws. And so a lot of people, like share, they like to use this verse talking when it speaks of the Melchizedek priesthood and the Levitical priesthood. And they use verse 12, where he says, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. And so they will use that, and they will say, Well, we don't have to do, you know, we have to 
focus or obey anything under the Old Testament laws because uh, now we're living under grace. We're living under the uh, dispensation of grace under, under Christ, and, and we don't have to do that. And so it's a general, general sense to say we don't, we don't do anything concerning the Old Testament. That doesn't make sense, right? Because a lot of people love to go back to the Psalms when they're going through some hard time, don't they? <laughs> they love to quote Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Well, if we're not living under the Old Testament, why are you quoting that, right? And so, a lot of times that people, I'm not trying to be critical because we all need to understand and learn and grow in God, but a lot of times, even recently, someone was calling Jesus a liar. He grew up in church, and he's calling Jesus a liar because Jesus made a statement saying, you know, this generation shall not pass until they see the Son of Man come in his glory, or something like that. And I said, well, a generation... Jesus lied. That generation died and he hasn't come yet. <laughs> and it's simply because they do not understand the scripture. Well, he also said a wicked and adulterous generation. He also said a generation of vipers. You know, when he speaks of a generation, he's speaking of a class of people, right? And so people can use something simple like that and call the Bible false or the Bible fake because they do not understand what God meant. And same thing with this, and he said because that generation, as we call it, generation, Jesus didn't come back, and so he's a liar. But God put every one of us under the same generation as being a wicked and adulterous generation. We still live in, in a wicked and adulterous generation, amen? And so that will go on all the way to the end until Jesus come back and renovate everything and change the laws and everything. We will still be under a wicked and adulterous generation. So because he didn't understand, even though he grew up in church and everything, because he didn't understand the Bible, he began to go, he, he feel he can go on the internet and promote that Jesus is, a, calling Jesus a liar, you know, come because of that, of his misunderstanding. And so people do the same thing also with this because they do not understand what has been changed under the priesthoods, under the Levitical priesthood to the Melchizedek priesthood. And because of that, a great error has happened. So a lot of people will ignore all these things but what he's talking about if you go back to verse 11 he said if therefore perfection were by the levitical priesthood right if therefore perfection were by the levitical priesthood he said for under it the people received the law he said what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of melchizedek and not be called after the order of aaron and so what god changed primarily from the Levitical priesthood to the Melchizedek priesthood, is that aspect of perfection, that aspect of purity. Under the Levitical priesthood, nobody could be made perfect. The law, even though it was a good law, even though it was the best law ever given, it could not make people perfect or complete. And that was, there was a weakness in the law. And that's what God changed. And so that's what we want to focus on tonight uh, is what God really changed between the two priesthoods. And he, what he changes is, uh, is, is the, the, the part that could not make us righteous in the sight of God, which we, knew, which we know was they had tried to accomplish it by animal sacrifice and uh, ritualistic things that they did, all these ceremonial aspects of the law, that was designed to make man right in the sight of God, but he couldn't do it because it couldn't change us on the inside. It couldn't bring about the change that was necessary. And so I want to read, before I get into it, I want to read Galatians chapter 3, verse 19 through 21. And we're talking about what has been changed. He said, Wherefore then, wherefore then serveth the law? He said, It was added because of transgressions, till the seed, which we know is Jesus, should come, to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. The mediator was Moses. Or as some will say, Mosi. <laughs> Verse 2. <laughs> now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Moses was a mediator of the Jews. Jesus, the mediator of the entire world. In verse 21, he said... Is the law then against the promises of God? He said, God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law 
by the law. And so he's letting us know that the law that God gave them was a perfect law, was a good law. There was never any law that could make man righteous or perfect, but the law that God gave to the people of Israel. However, though, there was a weakness in it. Amen? There was a weak link in this law, and that's what God changed after Jesus died and rose again from the dead. And God ordained him, as he keep reiterating over and over in chapter 7, after the order of Melchizedek, after God ordained him to be the eternal priest, uh, after the order of Melchizedek to be the one that will mediate for the entire world, God fixed that weak link. God fixed that thing that was weak in the law that the Levitical priesthood couldn't do. And that is uh, through Jesus Christ now, every one of us can become perfect in the sight of God. Remember what Jesus told them in the Old Testament? Or in the Old Testament. What Jesus told the Pharisees? He said, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. He said, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Right? The righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees was based upon works and, and the things of all the ritualistic things that it did under the Old Testament. And another verse Jesus told him, he said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. And so he's talking about being complete in God. And the only thing that can make us complete or perfect or righteous or holy in the sight of God was the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Was the blood of Jesus Christ. That was the only thing that could wash away our sins and make us clean. And so God... Under the Old Testament or the Levitical priesthood, that couldn't happen because man had a sinful nature. And man was constantly driven to sin. And because of that, he could not fulfill the laws of God. And therefore, God had to change that. Amen? God had to change. So that's the only change that the Lord made. Of course, there are certain things that he lifted, as we know of, such as uh, um, circum circumcision. We don't need to circumcise a male child any longer. People still do it. That's fine, but it's not, a, it's not a commandment. We don't need to abstain from meat. God lifted those burdens. So those are uh, things that has nothing to do with morality, right? Amen. And so God lifted those things. And thank God for that. The Sabbath day, God lifted that. Jesus is our Sabbath. But the most important change he made was that of sacrifices, animal sacrifice. We do not need to shed the blood of an animal to wash away our sins or to make us clean in the sight of God. We already have the Lamb. Amen? We already have the Lamb, the, the Son of God, Jesus, the one that came as a spotless, sinless sacrifice, and He died on that cross, and He rose again from the dead, and by His power and His resurrection and the authority given to Him by His Father as high priest over the entire world, now He can pardon us and cleanse us and make us perfect in the sight of God. Amen? Amen? And so thank God for that tonight. That only could have taken place under the Melchizedek priesthood, which puts it far better than the Levitical priesthood. Amen? And so thank God for that today, that we do not need to work or to offer an animal sacrifice in order to be right. God already provided sacrifice. The law was given by God, and it was good, as I shared with you in verse 21 of Galatians, he said, let me read again, is the law then against the promises of God? He said, God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, he said, verily righteousness should have been by the law. So the law that God gave them was a good law, but it had a weak link. There was a weakness in the law And the, like I said, the weakness is, number one, it couldn't give us the born-again experience that we have today. It couldn't change our sinful nature and give us spiritual power to live above sin. And it could not wash away our sin. All it did was cover it for another year until the high priest will have to enter into the Holy of Holies and do it year after year. So let me share a few verses of Scripture concern this. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 11, speaking about what God changed. He said, I'll read again one more time. For if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? 
Hebrews 7, verse 18 and 19. He said, For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. And then I want to read also Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 7. I'm talking about the weakness of the law. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 7. He said, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. You know what I'm talking about? Perfect. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Perfection. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshiper once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. And so all these things show in us that the law had a weakness. The law had a weakness when it comes to making people holy. When it comes to changing lives, when it comes to making people right in the sight of God and having peace and assurance, knowing that if they die, they will go to heaven. The law could not guarantee them that. And so Paul is telling them all these things here in all these verses of Scripture, that yes, the Levitical priesthood was good and it was, it was of God and all that stuff, but it could not do the most important thing for you that you needed done. And so he's letting them know that under Jesus, under the Melchizedek priesthood, which is far superior, Superior, he's letting them know that God has provided what they needed. They needed a born-again experience. They needed a change. They needed something that could help them to become perfect in the sight of God. And the only thing that could have done that was Jesus. Or the only one that could do that was Jesus. And the only thing was the blood that he shed for us. Amen? Amen. And so in Hebrews 7, 4, as I shared earlier... He said, for it, was not, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8 through 21, he said it this way. He said, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but by the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spots, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. People could have never been made clean or pure in the sight of God under the Levitical priesthood. And this is what makes the Melchizedek priesthood so much better. Number one is that now everyone who believes in God and accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior can be forgiven, can be cleansed, can be washed in the blood of the Lamb. They can be made clean. They can have an opportunity to worship God in the way that God intended it. They can have access to the throne of God 24-7. As he said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. They can have peace with God. They can have assurance. They can have righteousness on the inside, not on the outside. So all these things that man needed and man was searching for, that they couldn't find under the Levitical priesthood, now they can find it under the Melchizedek priesthood because Jesus made it available for us. Amen? Amen. And so that's what makes, him, makes this priesthood so much more superior. As he said in verse 25 of chapter 7, he said, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Showing us that Jesus is there ready and willing to forgive, ready and willing to cleanse, ready and willing to restore 
people to God. Thank God tonight for a God that cares about people enough that he was willing to take such drastic measures. He was willing to give his life. He was willing to come to this earth to die on the cross, to give of his life, to shed of his blood, so that all mankind can receive what they need. Amen? Amen. The Melchizedek priesthood is far superior because it got the job done. Amen? It got the job done. Under the Levitical priesthood, I share all these scriptures, nothing could be made, no one could be made perfect or complete. There was always a lacking. There was always coming up short. As he even shared in the scripture, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Levitical priesthood could not in any ways make men complete or perfect. And so God had to change it. Amen. And so that's the only change he made. Is he changed that weak link. He replaced it. And now we have something that is rock solid and strong and we can build our life upon it. So the weak link of the law is like a share in, a, in an other Bible study. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. Yeah? He didn't, he, did I say he didn't came? That's bad English. Jesus didn't come. <laughs> Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. He came to show man that what man couldn't do in their ability and their power he did it because he's God. Amen? Amen? And because he was able to fulfill the law and he was able to make it possible to where man can finally be free from the burden of sins. A man can finally have a, a walk with God. As he said in verse 19, he said, For the law made nothing perfect, he said, but the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw nigh to God. So now, through the Melchizedek priesthood, Jesus being the high priest, now we can be as close as we want to God. Amen? Amen. Now we don't have to be on the outside of the temple wondering, man, what, what in the world is going on in there? What are the priests doing in there? We've never seen. And like I say, he's talking to these Jewish people. They had never even seen the inside of the temple. Amen? The only one allowed in the temple was the priests, the sons of Aaron, not even the Levites. <laughs> the sons, unless they were needed. <laughs> you know, the priests couldn't get a job, then the Levites will help them out. But... And then, the, of course, the Holy of Holies, where the presence of God was, no one ever entered in there. Just the high priest once a year. Once a year. Now, he's letting these, these believers know in the book, in, in Hebrews there, as he's writing to them, hey, you don't have to be on the outside looking in any longer. You can come. Yeah? You can come to the very presence of God. You can enjoy the fellowship of God. <laughs> I was sitting at the dinner table today, <laughs> and I, I felt the presence of God came down, and, and then I got distracted, and my arms started, all the hair on my hand just stood up. <laughs> my wife and I were admiring it. <laughs> we were looking at it. I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot to give God glory, or whatever it was. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that we can have that closeness with God. You can feel God wherever you are amen throughout the day today at work feeling the presence of god reading the bible praying walking with god i can feel that closeness <laughs> under a levitical priesthood that did not have that amen it's only possible now because of what jesus did the born again experience opened up the gateway of heaven to us amen, amen. the born again experience opened up the doors into the eternal kingdom into the eternal a temple where God sits and, and Jesus sits on the right hand of God ready to make intercession now we can have fellowship with God amen and that's what makes us so better I'm so thankful that I live under this priesthood amen where I can have a reality in God I don't have to go through the motions I don't have to bring an animal sacrifice to the temple every time I sin I can just go straight to Jesus amen Lord I messed up forgive me amen thank God it's so much easier amen so much easier and so much cheaper <laughs> it is cheaper think about it you know think about it this in every day he said the priests had to offer for themselves every day every day he said it there in um, one of the verses I just read to you they had to offer for, for their sins on a daily basis and, and so now we don't have to go through all that stuff we don't have to go through all that stuff God made it easy the Melchizedek priesthood is the best to live under because it's a reality in God and not a religion. Amen. You get the job done, now we can have perfection in God. Now we can have peace with God. Now we can have fellowship with God. Now we can have a true walk with God. And we can enjoy God in our life. We can feel Him. 
we can walk with him, we can talk with him, and most of all, we can be changed from the inside out. Amen? Amen. And so that's, that was the weak point of the Levitical priesthood. It could not change us. But the Melchizedek priesthood can. Amen? Amen? And so that's what he's trying to share with them throughout all these chapters that I read to you. God gave us the best. Amen? God gave us the best. So, as I close the Bible study with that tonight, going back to the theme of the, the Bible study is, we made the right choice when we chose Jesus. Amen? Amen. We made the right choice when we chose to follow Christ. And with that, we'll close the Bible study tonight. Father, we just want to give you all the praise and thanksgiving, all the glory and honor and praise. We magnify you, thanking you for such a relationship and a reality in you, we ask God you continue to bless us, bless this church, bless all who will give themselves to you and serve you, draw them closer to you. Help us to realize that we do have the best. We have Jesus. We thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.